Hey everyone, it's Danielle Taylor with Keller Williams Realty here on the beautiful or uh, slightly not so beautiful Outer Banks today. We're getting rain again. I don't know, we're cursed with these videos. Um, but anyway, today you don't have to just listen to me. This is so exciting. Um, I have a very special guest for us today and that is my good friend and trusted lender, Kelly Bergenstock. And I could ask Kelly one million questions, but today I'm just going to focus in on one. And we're going to talk a little bit today about why I'm going to always tell you to use a local lender. And she's going to give us her take on it. But just to start out, Kelly, maybe you tell us a little bit about how long you've been in the business. Sure. So I've been in mortgage here on the Outer Banks about 20 years. Um, and I work with Caliber Home Loans. Our national lender so I've had the privilege of working with Caliber and a couple other national lenders here on the beach um, but certainly focused in on this market and they understand how to lend in this market so it's been a blessing to work with Caliber. That's amazing yeah. and I think that's what I love about working with you as a realtor is that you know the market so well and even though you've worked with a couple of different lenders, you're always really careful to watch underwriting and make sure that they can work in our market. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. We have local underwriting, processing, and everything, and that makes a big difference. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, my clients are always sick of hearing me say <laughs> why they should use a local lender, and I think sometimes they think I'm just crazy. Um, but you came out with some top tips before that I thought were really good. So... Um, I'm gonna put my old lady glasses on so I can read and I thought I'll just ask you a little bit about your top four Sure. Um, so ah, the first one <laughs> the vacation rental addendum So talk to us a little bit about that and how it relates to lending So here on the Outer Banks obviously our contracts have addendums that you don't see when you're not in a seasonal rental market mm -hmm. And the vacation rental addendum is one of them so basically what it does is it tells the underwriter that this home is in a, uh, a rental pool where we have seasonal rental income. So a lot of uh, lenders that don't work in our market don't understand what that means. Mm -hmm. And it will say that the home is available for rent typically January through December. And when you're financing something as a second home, you have to have two weeks available for your use. Right. So an underwriter unfamiliar with our market may look at this addendum and say, oh gosh, it's in a, you know, a rental program and there's no time for you to use it. So this has to be an investment property. Mm. And what happens is that creates higher interest rates, higher down payments, um, things like that. And so without that knowledge, uh, the buyer then is subject to those higher costs. Um, and a lot of times they don't identify this until a little bit too close to closing. Ah, <laughs> yes. For been whatever there. reason. Yeah. So obviously it's with the contract the entire time. Um, but sometimes the underwriters not being familiar, don't really review it until a little later in the process, perhaps past your due diligence date. Uh -huh. Um, and then that creates additional loss for the client if they're not able to finance it the way they want to finance it. Right. That's great. So basically, you know, unpacking that, I think it's, it's again leading back to a smooth transaction, but also making sure that with the underwriter being able to deal with it properly, they're getting the best possible loan at the best possible rate. Absolutely. That's amazing. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so that's great about vacation rental addendum. Let's talk about our friend, the bill of sale. <laughs> <laughs> again, another addendum very specific to our market that causes a little bit of chaos if you're unfamiliar with it. So as you know, uh, in this market, it is typical for items uh, in the house to convey with the property. Mm -hmm. And it really is for the convenience of the seller because nobody wants to take their beach furniture and transfer it to Wisconsin or wherever they're going. Right. Um, so or Grandma Sofa that's grandma been there sofa. for seven years. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever the case may be, they don't want to take it. So we have this bill of sale and um, these items are usually listed at no value to let the underwriter know that they are not in fact part of the value of the home um, such as a fixed asset would be, but they are conveying because it is convenient for the seller and the buyer. So again, uh, when you have an underwriter who's not familiar with our market, they will often try to assign value to these items. Mm -hmm. And they'll ask the appraiser to go back and take inventory of these items, assign a value, and then subtract that from the purchase price. Mm -hmm. So your borrower is then having to come up with more money down. Um, you know, here at Caliber, we have local underwriting and what we do is we make sure that the bill of sale matches with the appraisal. So the appraiser will comment and say, these items were given no value as per the bill of sale. Mm -hmm. And 
and when you're not familiar with that, an underwriter may not know to look for that and again would assign value to that, costing the borrower more money in terms of down payment and things of that nature, or possibly having to pay for those items out of pocket. Right. Our assistant has shown okay. that. Um, I just, something just occurred to me as you were saying that, that I wanted to just touch on, and it's kind of the first way, first time I've thought about this, because oftentimes what I hear from my clients is, but I love my lender, like they've done this for me before. What I just picked up on, it's not your lender, right? that's the hiccup, it's the underwriter. So yes. it's, that's, I think, something really interesting for us to unpack for our clients is, it's actually, we know you love your lender and your lender yes. wants to do it, but they're subject to their underwriters. Well, and I appreciate that loyalty because my clients will also call me and say, hey, I'm buying in you know, whatever market, can you help me there? And in most cases, if it's a seasonal rental market, I do defer them to a local lender. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in other situations where I've worked for other companies that may be large, like a large national bank, um, the underwriting isn't always centralized. So, you know, you may have an underwriter here in the Outer Banks that understands the vacation rental addendum and the bill of sale. And the underwriter for that same bank in a different market has no idea what it is because right. they're in two different locations. So you have to be really careful that, as you said, it's not the lender right. itself, it's where's the underwriter and do they understand. Right, oh, that's amazing. See, I'm, I'm, you're keying me in on stuff. Okay, let's talk about appraisals. Oh. <laughs> Today is not the day for that. I know, I think we just had this conversation <laughs> yes. on your way in. <laughs> they're tough. Um, so here in our market, we have a limited pool of appraisers. Um, you know, a lot of our appraisers have moved on to retirement and we, the, the appraisers that we do have here are absolutely fantastic, but we have a limited number of them. Right. Um, and so they can only handle so much. And oftentimes they give preference to the local lenders just to make sure that our appraisals get done. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're a buyer using a, a, an out of market lender, there's a good chance you're gonna struggle to find an appraiser. The other thing is a lot of mortgage companies use what's called uh, appraisal management companies. Mm. So these are third party companies that order the appraisals and they have no familiar, familiarity <laughs> with, that app, with the, uh, the local market. So they may send someone from, you know, uh, Raleigh to do an appraisal on the Outer Banks because mm -hmm. they don't understand our market is very specific. So it becomes worrisome that, you know, is the person doing the appraisal knowledgeable in our market? How quickly can they turn it around? Um, and it's not as easy to just say, oh, well, you know, we'll add this appraiser in locally or anything like that to get it done. So appraisers uh, right now are, they're hard to come by. <laughs> And <laughs> the term times are long. So using an out-of-town lender can certainly create additional issues with that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, and last but not least, well, we actually kind of touched on this because it was local underwriting. So it kind of feeds into both yes. the bill of sale and the VRA. So we talked about how important that is. So if you could give, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot because okay. I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this. Um, <laughs> if you could give buyers advice on what's the one top thing that they could do to make sure that their transaction goes smoothly? What would you say? Get pre-qualified well ahead of when you are looking. Okay. Um, and you know, right now I have a lot of clients say, well, I don't want my credit pulled because it's going to you know, affect my score and the, the inventory is low and I don't know if I'm gonna get the house. And I certainly understand all of that. However, what happens is the house that you're looking for comes up available on a Friday night and there's eight contracts and they're calling for highest and best and you're not even pre-qualified and you're self-employed and now I have to do tax return analysis or there's something I need more information about. It creates a, a chaos for everyone involved. So I think the best practice is, you know, if you're really looking, go ahead and get pre-qualified ahead of time. And that all we have to do is update the letter when you find the house. Right. And that pre-qualification is good for four months. Mm -hmm. So it really does last you know, a long time and should allow for um, several viewings of properties and things as they come up. But it really is important because the worst thing is for you to finally find the house and I can't qualify you in time because there's right. missing pieces of information. Right, that's great. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, we've talked about this a lot about how competitive the market is. And um, I will say that one of the reasons Kelly's at the top of my list is because she is available. So if we find a property on a Saturday or Sunday and we need an updated letter, 
we're going to be able to get that from you. So. Well, and, and one other thing I'll add is a lot of uh, my realtor partners tell me is that, you know, a seller does look at the local lending letter and mm -hmm. say, okay, this person is working with a local Great lender. Great point. And so, you know, in a competitive market, they know that here we're going to be able to get it done versus some lender they don't know about that's from out of town. So it's an advantage. I'm so glad you said that because I know when I'm representing my seller clients and we're doing our summary sheet of all the different offers, that is a spot mm -hmm. where we do know in town or out of town. It doesn't necessarily mean the out of town guy wouldn't win, sure. but it gets weighted with the in town. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you so You're much. Welcome. I love I it. Um, everybody, if you have more questions for Kelly, I'm sure you do. Okay. Hit us up um, because I've, I've already got my, the wheels are turning. I've already got other things I want to talk to Kelly about. So um, other days we're going to get her to come back. So if you have questions, make sure you let us know. Drop them in the comments and we'll make sure that we set up a time with Kelly to talk about him again. So thanks so much and we'll see you soon.